but let's work through some synthesis while we've, uh, since we've covered all these new reactions today. Starting with a tertiary alcohol. Um, and it looks like that methyl group, which would be quite hard to move, is still on this carbon. So the purple carbon has lost the OH. <clears throat> the adjacent carbon has two H's on it to start. Uh, but now one of them has been replaced with this methoxy. So what I see is that the OH disappears and a new functional group O-methyl appears on the adjacent carbon, which means that the intermediate to make is the alkene between those two adjacent carbons, where you have this carbon, carbon pi bond. Once again, we want to make an alkene, uh, but this time we're doing it from an alcohol instead of a alkyl halide. So this time we need to add a strong acid and do acid catalyzed dehydration, which is a reaction we covered previously. So this acid catalyzed dehydration will protonate, water will leave, and the carbon cation will be deprotonated at this beta hydrogen. We've lost H2O. And remember that removing water and raising the temperature favors the elimination. Okay, that's an E1 step uh, or an E1 mechanism because we're in a strongly acidic solution without strong base for E2. So now we want to go from this alkene uh, to a point where we have an oxygen uh, that is a methyl ether. And we're going to make both enantiomers <clears throat> where the oxygen is specifically trans to the methyl. So if you take this alkene and you want to install the oxygen at the less substituted carbon, like we said in a previous example, that's the hydroboration. And it won't give us the methoxy group, but it'll give us an alcohol. And remember that this is a syn addition uh, because the mechanism of borane with an alkene is concerted. So when boron and uh, hydrogen add, they add syn. And it turns out the OH and the H will also be syn, which means that the methyl group gets pushed forward if the alcohol adds from the back. The alkene is planar though. So at this point, we can attack uh, with boron from the top or the bottom of the alkene. If boron instead is to add from the top, then the water molecule is now there and the methyl gets pushed back. And now we're going to go from alcohols to ethers, where this is going to first need to be a deprotonation with a strong base. That will give you an O minus here. And then we need to add the methyl with a leaving group or a methyl electrophile. So that last step is just your Williamson ether synthesis that we did a couple examples of on the last page. Okay, so it's really important to remember hydroboration uh, because hydroboration gives you these syn stereospecific uh, products where hydroxyl and hydrogen add on the same face and the same face only. And therefore the methyl is trans to the oxygen in the product. Okay, um, let's do one more synthesis problem here. 
sort of put things together and review even a little bit from unit two with this one. Um, you may be given restrictions on your syntheses where you're given only a limited number of carbons. So this product, uh, which is hex-3-ene, specifically the E-isomer, has six carbons. And <clears throat> it's pretty obvious, I think, that the methyl groups on the ether that's one of your carbon sources are probably these terminal methyls that would require the least change, which means that these methylenes or CH2s are next door. And then the SP carbons have now become the SP2 carbons of the alkyne. Sorry, the alkene. So I'm going to think about this one retrosynthetically at first to try to work backwards a little bit. Because we have an E alkene. And previously, that was probably the alkyne, simply because of the pi bond there. So we have a triple bond, and then there are ethyl groups. And to reduce this down in a stereospecific way to E, this is a hard reaction to remember, but it's called the dissolving metal reduction, where you use any one of these three, lithium, sodium, or potassium. They're alkali metals. And they give the electrons for reduction, but you have to include the solvent here. Ammonia provides the actual hydrogens that add trans or do that anti-type addition. That gives the E alkene. Now, we can kind of see where we're going because the alkyne, we now need to take off the hydrogens one step at a time and add these ethyl branches. And we've done that before with chain elongation. So I'm gonna take the alkyne and turn it into an acetylide ion. So it's now a good nucleophile. And remember to do that, you have to use sodium amide, which is a super base. And that's an ammonia solvent. And then to that, you need to add this ethyl branch. So to get to the point where we have this ethyl group, the electrophile needed for that would be ethyl bromide or chloride or iodide. And the carbon that was bound to the ethyl is now, <clears throat> or was bound to the bromide, excuse me, is now here. So this was not a carbon source we were given, but diethyl ether was. And you guys now know how to turn ethers into alkyl bromides by addition of HBr and ether cleavage. That's an SN2 mechanism. So you can do that for both sides here and get two equivalents of ethyl bromide and then just repeat with sodium amide to deprotonate the other acetylenic hydrogen or a terminal proton. And then you can use ethyl bromide again, which we already made. So now you have all six carbons in a row, and then you just do your reduction. <clears throat> 